My name is Jasmine Stanley and I'm a communications professional. I think people see me and they always tell me like, whatever you say you're gonna do, you do it. And whatever like idea you have, you bring it into reality. I make it happen. Sometimes you gotta be radical. Like you gotta be different in order to get something different. Right now, I got a small family. It's just me, my daughter, my boyfriend, and our dog. My daughter is nine years old. Um, she's very active in sports and in community activities. We are a young family. There is some struggle. We're not like, we don't have a whole lot of money because we're just getting started in our careers and stuff. We're trying, like we're becoming. I can see a lot of potential for us in the future. I think we need to understand that the legal system and a lot of these systems were originally set up and intended to benefit uh, certain people and, and not others. And I would say that most uh, renters who show up in a housing court situation are among those who weren't intended to benefit from those systems, while the landlords are often among the intended beneficiaries. So the, the deck is stacked uh, before the parties show up at court. You know, I met Jasmine during an eviction hearing and it wasn't for non-payment. That was the special part about it. She had a good case against the landlord. She's a young lady and I can tell she had dreams and she just so happened to be in this predicament. One day she just called me crying saying, I don't know what to do, me and my child. And all I can tell her is, you know, you can do it. That's what was the grounds of my eviction saying that I broke community rules. We're just so sad, it's making me tear up now because we thought we were gonna have to like move out by the court date. And so we was trying to find a place to live in two weeks, right before Christmas. It's freezing cold outside, it's snowing, and it's Minnesota, like, it feels terrible. You feel like you got no control. Like somebody can just take you out of your house. And then I didn't even get a chance to even try to say, no, this didn't happen. It's just like, you gotta go. People that were being evicted without cause and there was nothing they could do in unrepresented tenants. We all had concerns. We all heard the horror stories about what was going on, but you wanna see it for yourself if you can. And we were having court right downstairs. Evictions were happening here. And so we were able to just stop down there and actually sit in and see what evictions look like. So. In this building, if you walk out of the courtroom and take about 10 steps, there is access to emergency assistance applications right there. But there is nobody to direct tenants to that resource. Then there were unrepresented clients, people that maybe should not have been representing themselves, maybe would have been best served if they had access to legal aid. One of the things that is often shocking to people who find themselves in eviction court is that the mere filing of an eviction stays on their record and becomes a barrier to future rental opportunities. It was the scariest thing, like, I'm not gonna ever be able to move anywhere, like how? Am I gonna do this? It has a devastating effect to have that eviction on someone's record. It follows them. It um, severely limits their access to housing that they can afford, that's decent and well-managed. The process is confusing and bewildering to normal people. What would it look like if the start of the uh, housing court calendar included an announcement from the judge or the referee that there are these resources available. There's free legal representation for renters. There's help applying for emergency assistance. There's mediation. There are folks uh, comparable to what 360 Communities provides that can, that can help people. And actually adjourn for a time and let people access those resources and maybe work something out in the hallway with, uh, between the two parties, the, the renter and the landlord. The court is set up as a, a problem-solving arena and a resource-rich environment. We 
reached out to a funder and agencies that we thought would be great to work with. We got it all together and started looking at other court programs that were working and uh, instead of recreating the wheel, we mirrored what we liked there and added our own new things that I thought was important to the program and we went from there. When we first approached the courts with this idea, they were very excited to have something to offer and so have been a great partner and, and uh, very excited to have us come in there and been more than accommodating. Judges are people too and I, I think sometimes people forget that and so they don't feel good about going into a situation where they're putting a household out with nothing else to offer. There's not one solution for every person who finds themselves in housing court. Different families have different needs. Not every organization has the resources to be all things to all people. And so what we've tried to do by coming together is make sure we have the most resources at the table to meet the individual needs of people who find themselves at housing court. The problem with evictions is we really have a small window to put the, those emergency assistance packages together and everybody wants time. So they want time to process our requests and we don't have that time with the courts. So we have been asking the attorneys for the landlords to give us a little bit more time to process those applications. We have great team members. We have fabulous staff from 360s communities, checking in with people, offering housing resources, but also helping them fill out applications for Dakota County specific programs. And then we have both legal services organizations that serve Dakota County to quickly give people legal advice. But we've really come together on this project in order to make sure that we are able to serve all of the members of our community. Jasmine has a drive. She's strong-willed, resilient. That is her to a T. She fights for what's right, but she does it so respectfully. I did help her apply for cash and SNAP assistance during her housing search. And then I also referred her to financial empowerment for budgeting so she can balance out what she can afford. I think by all those resources, she was able to figure out something for herself to be stable with her child. Like, this lady is serious. She is for real in helping me. The case turned out in her favor. You know, she had 30 days to move out. I'm so happy that we didn't end up with an eviction. The emotional support, feeling like you got somebody who understands you. Felt like you just had somebody in it with you, fighting for it with you. So the new place that we live is perfect. It's closer to my daughter's school. Everything that she does, all her friends are there. She's in all these activities, so everything is in that area. Home feels like when we're all together, when we have stability, like when we're not worried about where we're going to live, money, or how to pay bills. It just feels good when we are just together and just knowing that we're, we're safe. Everything's going to work out.